our activities during the day involve a lot of movement where the hips stay in the same plane. In yoga standing postures, oftentimes, such as Virabhadrasana 2, we've got one external rotation, one internal rotation. Back leg is internally rotated, front leg is externally rotated. In this practice, we'll work on that external rotation and strength and flexibility in the abductors. We'll begin standing. Start in a wide stance. As you step wide, turn your right toes out. Let's come to Virabhadrasana 2 or Warrior Pose number 2. Bend your knee. Now to start working that external rotation, take your hands and just manually lift up the inner thigh. So you're rolling the flesh around the thigh bone. You lift up and sometimes the knee goes slightly out of whack. So keep the knee aligned right over the ankle. Keep this nice external rotation. Inhale, come out of the pose. Come to the opposite side, do the same thing. Bend your knee. With your hands, lift up your inner thigh muscles. Draw toward the outer thigh. So an external rotation that we manually create just with the hand so that you get the sensation of what external rotation of the front leg is all about. So let's come to do the full pose again. So as you turn your right toes out, bend your right knee, get that lifting quality of the inner thigh to externally rotate the upper thigh. From here, extend your arms out, take your gaze out, open the chest as you maintain that strong externally rotated front leg and just drop a little bit deeper into your pose. Inhale, rise up out of the pose. Let's do the opposite side. As you turn your left toes out, bend your left knee, draw the inner thigh up manually create that external rotation of the upper inner thigh keep that expand fully in your pose take your gaze out over the extended hand keep that strong engagement and maybe just drop in a little bit deeper in your pose root down to rise up to come out of the pose in triangle pose we also externally rotate the front leg. So as you turn your right toes out, just get that lifting quality of the upper inner thigh so that you feel that manual external rotation that you created. Reach your arms up, draw over. Just come down to wherever it feels right for you. Maintain the strong engagement of the front leg, that external rotation, a strong engagement of the back leg helps you root down to solidly and evenly lift up out of the pose. Come to the opposite side, turn your left toes out. Manually, externally rotate the upper inner thigh. Expand your pose by reaching your arms out. Keep that strong external rotation. Come down to the form of the triangle pose. Not too deep. We're just trying to work one aspect of a very complicated pose, actually. Root down to inhale and come out of the pose. Release your hands. If you've got blocks, you might want to grab them now. That would make this a little bit more accessible. As you take a block to the outer right ankle, bend your right knee, 
as if coming to Virabhadrasana number two. Place your left hand to the outer thigh as a way to have something to work against. The knee loves to come out of alignment into more internal rotation. By working the hand to the outer knee, you have to really work that external rotation to keep the knee aligned right over the ankle. Take your hand down to the block. Keep on working that strong external rotation. Maybe you can go a little bit deeper in the pose. As the hand works against the outer thigh, the leg works strong to maintain that engaged external rotation. Now inhale, lift yourself to come out of the pose. Try that on the other side. Grab your block if you need it. With your left toes turning out, the block just to the outer ankle, bend your left knee. Strong engagement. See if you can get that external rotation without the lifting of the inner thigh. Once you engage the left leg, take your right hand to the outer thigh. Now work the hand in such a way that you really have to engage to create more external rotation as you take your left hand down to the mat. The right hand is still working strongly against the leg and you feel all the way to the middle of the buttocks. You feel that engagement. Now slowly come out of the pose. We'll apply this action, this external rotation of the upper inner thigh to Ardha Chandrasana. What's called a pinnacle or peak pose of the practice. We'll go to Ardha Chandrasana through Parsvakanasana. To me, it's a much more accessible way to work into the pose. Ardha Chandrasana is a balance pose. So we'll work in a way to engage nicely before coming to the full pose. We'll engage the back leg, stepping in toward a balance pose with a few cycles before we come into the full pose. Turn your right toes out. Let's see if you can do this without the block. The blocks are useful in this pose for some of us, but it's also really good to anchor your extended hand into the mat. Let's see if you can do it without the blocks. Turn your right toes out, bend your knee, take your left hand to the outer right thigh, take your right hand all the way down to the earth. Lift up your back heel and step in so that your right hand now creates nice, strong stability. One of the errors that many of us do is to take our hand right alongside the right ankle. You really need to step it out in order for that stability. Lift up your back leg and now take it down. Just practice lifting the leg up, take it down. Last time, lift the leg up and take it down. Root down to inhale and lift yourself up. Release your hands. Let's come to the opposite side. So turn your right toes in, turn your left toes out, bend your left knee, Take your right hand to the outer thigh, just as a reminder to work the leg in such a way that you create that external rotation. Place your hand down to the mat. Step in so that you can reach your hand just a little bit further for stability. Inhale, lift up the back leg. Exhale, take it down. Inhale, lift up, exhale down, inhale, lift up, 
Exhale, take it down, root down through the back leg to lift yourself up out of the pose. Now we'll do the full pose of Ardha Chandrasana or half moon pose that relies on strength in the outer hip through that external rotation of the upper inner thigh. So as you turn to the right, we'll come through Parasvakanasana again. Bend your right knee. Lift your arms up through Virabhadrasana number two. Take your hand down to the mat. Take your left hand to your waist. Step in. Situate your right hand in such a way that you, you've got stability through two points before lifting up the back leg. See if you can lift it high. If you feel like you've lost that external rotation and the left hand working against the leg creates just a, a little bit more stability, a little bit more external rotation, you can do that. Or you can expand very fully in the pose. Reach your arm up. Maybe you can reach your gaze up. Now let's slowly come back through Parsvakanasana, keeping nice stability in the front leg. Reach your left leg back. Land it nicely so that you can rise up. Come out of the pose. Release your hands. Come to the opposite side. Bend your knee. Reach your arms up. Expand fully. Take your hand down to the mat. So you start with a hand close to the ankle, but you have to step in so they can really root down with a strong foundation in both the hand and the foot before lifting up. And again, so many of us just feel like we lose that external rotation in the standing leg. So just using your hand to create a little bit more stability, a little bit more engagement, or you can lift up your hand, maybe lift up your gaze. Just feel this nice freedom in the pose. And as you slowly come out of the pose, do it with grace and ease as you reach back through the lifted leg and rise up. Release your hands. We'll come to a seated pose called Dandasana with our feet forward. With your feet forward, you may find that the low back rounds a bit. You want to draw in and up with the low back. That's not happening for you. Sit on a blanket to get a little elevation to ensure a nice elongation of the spine. Now we'll start by bending the right knee, plant the right foot. The right foot is not really close to the pelvis. It's about halfway to the pelvis. Keep your knee lined up with the pelvis, but walk your foot over to the right. The knee likes to travel with the foot. Keep your foot engaged. Keep your extended leg engaged. And when you feel like you've gone as far as it works for you, you might want to provide a little support for your knee. With the knee still in line with the pelvis. Use your hands if you feel like you're leaning too far to the left and you've lost your engagement on the right sit bone. You might even have to create a little bit more height in your either your block or use a 
blanket. Keep the engagement of both the extended leg and the right leg. So now we're working on internal rotation of the leg as a way to just create a little bit more awareness to external rotation. You can come out of the pose and do external rotation of the leg. So bend your knee, draw the knee out externally. If you feel any pain in this action, pain through the knee, then you need to back off. Really honor your knees through this. Extend the right leg out now. We'll do the same thing with the left. So bend your left knee. Just come about halfway to your hip. Keep your knee lined up, but watch your foot over to the side. Keep on reaching forward with the knee, and you may find yourself leaning into the right side. But see if you can keep your right sit bone planted nicely, your right toes heading straight up. And this leg, it looks like I can go a little bit lower. I'll support the inner knee while still working the foot to the side. And after pausing in that pose, you can now take the foot in and once again, do an external rotation of the hip. With both feet together, a strong external rotation. Lift your heart, draw your heart forward. Bow as a way to just kind of honor this time that you can spend in the practice to work on very specific action in your yoga poses. Thank you for joining me in the practice. Namaste.